Good morning. Welcome to Fight to Good Fight Ministries. We want to welcome you guys all here this morning. Um, we are blessed and privileged this morning to have my wife, Pastor Shannon, uh, give the message this morning. I'm excited. I'm excited for uh, the word. That's the great thing about being in ministry with your wife, amen, because you guys can share God's pulpit as much as we share the word together. But uh, we want to welcome you guys. Thank you guys for being here this morning. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's bow and get ready for the word of God. Amen. Father, we just thank you, God, for this day that you've given us, Father. We thank you for your anointing that's put upon this pulpit and upon your speaker this morning, God. We thank you, God, that your, your son, Jesus Christ, is still alive and sitting at the right hand of you, Father God. And that, Lord, he's still large and in charge, Father. So, Lord... Give us, uh, give the speaker your the anointing and the words that you want her to speak today, God. Let your words go forth and pierce the inner parts of our hearts, Father God. And Lord, your word says that your word does not come back void, Father. So Lord, we just thank you, God, for your word that's alive and active, Father God. And Lord, may somebody be touched this morning by your word. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. So I just want to thank you guys for joining to Fight the Good Fight Ministries. And uh, I want to start off if uh, there are those of you that like to take notes. Uh, the title is Jesus Must Be the Center of Your Life. And so we're going to start out here by going to Philippians 3.10. So if you have your Bibles and you're taking notes, let's start out by Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. So it says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Oh, come on. So I'd like to read that again, and I want you and I to think about each and every word and every sentence and think about Paul's determined purpose here, what he is saying. He says, I want to know Christ, and I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. So let's think about that for just a moment. When we think about sharing with Christ, some of us may say, even his death? Well, if we're gonna make Jesus the center of our lives, we want to be able to become so close with Jesus, amen? And how is that that we can get close to him? We need to be in prayer. We need to be in the word. And we have to pursue holiness. Amen? Amen. So as we read here, Paul was determined for his purpose. He simply wanted to know Jesus more. And that's how you and I should think and feel at the same time. So I wanna ask those that are sitting here, those that are watching online, how many of us are showing a passion and that have a driving force to make <clears throat> Jesus the center of your life? Amen? Amen? So being that we only have family here, we haven't opened our church yet, but those that are watching just think about that how many of you show a passion and have that driving force to make Jesus the center of your life now pursuing anything other than Jesus with just your one simple life is just a waste of time yes I said that Pursuing anything other than Jesus with your one simple life is just a matter of wasted time. Amen. Nothing will last. 
nothing will matter. Not even a hundred years from now, nothing will matter. And nothing will outlast that. So with that being said, let's get further into the message because I know you're gonna love it. So for those of you that are taking notes, I'd like to read to you a famous quote by Billy Graham. And hopefully you all know who Billy Graham is. And this is what he said. He said, the ultimate experience in life is knowing Jesus. I think that needs to be repeated, don't you? The ultimate experience in life is knowing Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I get amen. more than one amen? amen? Amen. So let's ask yourself, those that are sitting here this morning, those that are watching, what is your determined purpose? And what drives you? Please, by all means, send me an email. <clears throat> Call me. Meet me on Fight the Good Fight website and just let me know what is your determined purpose and what drives you? Because I know this, that one thing that you're worshiping and what you are worshiping sits at the center of your heart. Come on. Amen to that? Yes, amen. Amen. Jesus must be the center of all of our lives. So maybe you ask yourself this morning, well, how can I know? How do I know what is driving me? I want you to just take a moment and follow the trail of your time. Where are you going? Where is most of your time spent? Follow the trail of your money. Yes. I said money. Follow the trail of your money as well as your desires. Follow the desires. Where are those desires going? And guess what? They will lead you to what your heart has. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And just give me a moment to get there. We have a real Bible here with real pages. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything that we see, and a pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but they are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Amen? Amen? So I must remind you, we must keep Jesus at the center of our lives. Yes, amen. So let's find out what happens when we do make Jesus the center of our life. So go ahead, I'll give you a moment. Get your pins out. Get your pads out because I know you're going to want to take notes. And it's not because I'm saying, oh, this is great. My notes are great. But I think anything with the word is great. Right? Amen. Right. So let's start with number one. When he, Jesus, is at the center, all your thinking is Christ-centered. Right? Let me say that again. When he, Jesus, is at the center, all your thinking is Christ-centered, right? So when we stop to say, you know what, I'm looking for a new job. I'm just going to go ahead and go online. Take a moment and pray about it. 
let your mind get one with Christ so you are Christ-centered. Amen. Amen? Let's go to number two. By letting Christ be at the center, we create a new self. And I'm going to give you a scripture. We're not going to go there, but I want you to write it down. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And that scripture will back up number two. Letting Christ be at the center, we create a new self. Point number three. By letting Christ be the center of our lives, he gives us power and resources to live in this world successfully. And that scripture we're going to go to. Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I'll give you a moment to go there. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And again, I'm reading out of the New Living Testament. And it says this. I can do everything through him who gives me what? Who gives me what? I'm waiting, folks. Who gives me strength? I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen? Amen. So let's go to point four. By letting Christ be the center of our lives, we will accept the world as a place that we can live in without fear. We can have confidence. We can have joy. I want to back that up by 1 John. I'll give you a moment. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory. Amen. The amen isn't in there. I was just saying amen. You have already won a victory because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. The spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Amen. Amen to that? So yes, you can have confidence to live in this world without fear. You can have confidence. You can have joy. It tells us in 1 John 4.4. 4. So let's go on. This is my last point. And yes, most of my messages, they're short, they're sweet, but they're to the point. Let's go to point five. By letting Christ be the center of our lives, he is our purpose. I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. By letting Christ be the center of our lives, he is our purpose. I don't know what your purpose is out there, folks, but know this. If you are a born again believer, or if you've been walking with the Lord 20, 30, 40 years, or even six months, he is our purpose. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And just give me a moment. Again, I'm using uh, a real Bible here. And I am reading out of the New Living Testament. Okay, starting with verse 6. As for me, my life has been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. And I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. Man. Have you remained faithful? Have you fought the good fight? 
Maybe you're still fighting the good fight. What? I know I'm fighting that good fight. Yes. And I want to keep going. I want to finish this race. And I want to keep fighting. And I want to continue to make God the center of my life. You know, the Bible says that everything in life has a reason and has a purpose. It has a beginning and it has an end. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if you're up against a wall. I don't know if maybe you're climbing a mountain or you're going through a trial or you're going through a test or you're sick or disease has stricken your body and you're going through some type of whatever it may be, test, trial, suffering. I'm here to tell you this morning, make Jesus the center of your life. Mom. Make Jesus the center <coughs> of your life. And I can guarantee you this, <coughs> it won't always be a bed of roses, but I can tell you this, You'll have more confidence, you'll have more joy, and you'll have more peace. And your purpose will be the right purpose because you will make Jesus the center of your life. Amen? Amen. And I wanted to give you just a couple of extra scriptures to go over at maybe a later time. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 is also an excellent scripture pertaining to allowing Christ to be the center of your life. And I wanna thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I wanted to share some really good news with you. Starting tomorrow, Monday, August 3rd at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live, we will have the morning show with Pastor Vic and Shannon. You won't want to miss it. I'm telling you, we're going to have cooking challenges. We are going to have baking challenges. We are going to have um, testimonies. We're going to have guest speakers and we're going to have pranks. The whole thing is just so exciting. Even to just talk to you about it, it's exciting. And I can't wait for you to join us. Also, check us out on Fight the Good Fight dot com check us out on facebook and uh, check out our new videos we appreciate that you joined us this morning thank you god bless mm -hmm.